Welcome to the African Leadership Series, where we bring you great inspirational speeches of African leaders. Before the collapse of the bipolar world, President Nyerere was passing through my country, I think to refuel, when I met him at the airport. And as we were walking from the aircraft to the lounge, he was asking me, what are we going to do with the imminent collapse of the Eastern Bloc? You know, because their socialist policies, you know, served as a counterbalance of a sort to the capitalist, whatever it is. I couldn't answer him because we really couldn't tell the way the world was going to be like. And, uh, but I ventured a little suggestion that, uh, well, the capitalists are Christians and they've been touting the values and the culture of democracy. And that's supposed to be at the core of their struggle, their fight. You know, so maybe the world might turn out to be a better place. The very Pope John Paul, who contributed to the collapse of the Eastern Bloc, have several years later indicted the economic practices of the world with the words, the savagery, in his pastoral letter, the savagery of capitalism. That should tell you what, what became of the world after the collapse of the bipolar world. Yeah, nepotism, the, the privatization of power, both economic and political, has been the order of the day. So, and further down, several years later, what did President Carter also say? He indicted America, he reproached America and said, uh, you've lost your moral stature. And in a way, this is why the world was so expectant. This is why Mandela became such a powerful figure after him. Uh, the, the world, America, found, what's his name, Obama. And he suddenly looked like a man of, uh, with political morality. And the world was so expectant of his leadership, really. Because what had happened earlier was just too much. Incidentally, in case you never saw this, and I'm saying it as a reminder, many years ago, Dick Cheney, who became Bush's, Junior Bush's uh, uh, vice president, used to be the minister for defense. You know what he said on CNN? That America's interest supersedes, overrides issues of morality. I saw it. I said, my God. That may be the case, but to mouth it this way and we'll teach our enemies to fear us and blah, 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 blah. I felt very sad, very sad. But that has been the reality. Mm -hmm. Obama did his bit to hold it in check with the practices of some of these multinational entities and corporations, but the point is that it has assumed a life of its own in the rest of the world. And Africa with its weak situation, vulnerable situation, weak institutions has become the most vulnerable place, you know? And we get up and we, yeah, of course the media is doing its job, portraying all kinds of little activities going on, Africa's on the rise, etc. Of course, we can see all these buildings, all these structures, etc. But I'm saying that it looks like we're being assimilated, you know, in the name of investment and these private entities, you know. Uh, we will continue to hold the short end of the stick for, for some time. Can we unchain ourselves? Can we get out of that grip, that hold, you know? It'll take people like Kunkapa, solid integrity, and not materialistic, if you see what I mean. That is something that we've always respected about your country, uh, uh, Tanzania, under the leadership of President Nyerere. 
you've not allowed money, the monetization of your democracy, of your electoral process. But I believe you're in danger of having that now, like the rest of us. And that's not healthy, because you end up with a situation, right or wrong, becomes politicized, as my daughter said a few weeks ago. If you like more African speeches like this, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to catch all our latest videos. Remember to leave your suggestions on the topics you would like us to cover in the comments below.